I'll start with the invisible guy, right? So this is Jason Kreidner. I'm a founder of BeagleBoard. Um, I sit on the board, um, along with Robert here is also on the board. But um, um, yeah, so involved in all things BeagleBoard. And I'm Robert Nelson. I'm the guy that does all the images, kernel development, whatnot. I work for DigiKey on my real time, work on the board, free time, always on Beagle. So. Oh, sure. Hey, uh, I'm Nishant. Uh, I work for Texas Instruments, uh, kernel maintainer, uh, but in TI, I'm also the Linux architect, mostly messing around with Beagle, um, contributor upstream. Hello, everyone. I'm Vaishnav. I work at Texas Instruments, mainly working on Linux kernel and separators. And I started contributing to Beagle as a GSOC student, and I am still find my free time to contribute to all the Beagle projects. Still fixing all my bugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Alexander Mitrovich. I'm coming from Microelectronica, also known as MicroE. Um, currently working as a product marketing manager and um, head of the Clickboard development team. So. Um, if you're looking for somebody behind the clickboards, I, I'm the guy. Yeah, awesome, guess... awesome stuff with the, the all the clickboards, man. It's just it's so impressive, um, all the hardware and software that you guys put out. Um, it's just an incredible ecosystem. So it's awesome to have you on the on the show. Yeah, thank you, and thank you also for inviting me here. It's really a pleasure to be here. Yeah. For sure. So before we jump into the clipboard, just you know, quick uh, a background of my micro e so and the microelectronica. So we exist as a company for almost twenty plus years. Uh, from the day one, we were um, developing and manufacturing different uh, boards, um, aim boards or add-on boards uh, around the microcontrollers, especially. And in 2006, we started, you know, also creating our own um, IDEs and compilers, which definitely brought us to uh, a position to be and, and to have an ecosystem of tools around the microcontroller. So on that, let's say, path, we develop, uh, of course, boards, and, and uh, on that path, we also develop a standard. So and which we are definitely proud of. You know? So coming from MicroE, uh, definitely the most famous is a microbus for a small add-on board. So that, that's something that we introduced in 2011. And from that time, we, we like, kick it off with, I think, the 10, uh, 10 boards or something like that. Uh, and in, in that time, uh, really a MicroE and maybe uh, a small number of uh, other manufacturers besides the silicon vendors introducing different tools which uh, uh, customers and end users can, can enjoy enjoy having. Um, so from that time until now, fast forward, uh, from those 10 boards in 2011 up to now with the uh, 1400 plus boards which we have, uh, we definitely created a, a huge ecosystem of these small add-on boards. And um, yeah, Microbus is a standard, it's of course open standard. Um, we just utilize of course, all at that time, we we thought like uh, all interfaces, which uh, I'd say commonly you can see on the peripherals, like you know, I, uh, SPI, I square C, uh, UART, PVM, you know, analog line, which a couple of GPIOs, and also at that time, uh, 3.3 and 5 volts, which are let's say common when it's come to microcontrollers working with peripherals. Today, of course, we have 1.8 common for FPGAs and other system on chips and um, some other interfaces uh, which uh, we, talk, we, we think will, let's say, find a way to support uh, uh, in the future, like I2S, a couple of others. But for now, the, the standard is well accepted by the industry. Uh, of course, legal board organization with uh, several boards supported the microbus uh, uh, really a long time ago. Now with the Beagle Play, Beagle Connect, uh, we, we, we really expect uh, um, uh, clickboards to be um, easily connected, uh, easily utilized uh, with the Linux uh, systems uh, in the future. Um, and um, yeah, as I said, a huge number of boards that we have and that we introduced every year. Fun fact that uh, roughly we have 200 new clickboards every year. Which, uh, which bring us to the four to five every week, which is for me even working at MicroE for 
almost eight years is still amazing how, how, how we are doing it but if we draw a line definitely we cannot support every single silicon in the world coming every day but we are giving our best really really we are giving our best to do that now sometimes that's just amazing to think about how a new board every single working day yeah 10 a.m. Central European time. You can go and find maybe a new, new, new sensor, a new model, or new technology uh, that that is uh, definitely supported by a silicon vendor and modern manufacturers. I guess Alex, there are some things you could probably talk about too. You, you have your micro SDK where you pretty much try to generically support all your boards you can, and that's seen a lot of development over the last year too, especially with the version two that came out. And yeah. So, as I mentioned at the beginning, you know, we started uh, creating a boards. After that, we had the compiler. At some point, we had a bigger problem than some silicon vendors, right? Because we support so many different architectures, so many different compilers coming from uh, ARM up to PIC and AVR, etc. Uh, at one point, we had seven compilers, uh, three different languages, C, Basic, and Pascal, and, and it was uh, uh, when you have one compiler and one software, it's it's really difficult to maintain to uh, provide all the updates to keep it uh, uh, up to date. Uh, so uh, by adding uh, a clipboard, that started to be even more complicated, right? So in order to um, speed up development on our side, when it's come to making a clipboard, like designing them from the hardware perspective, uh, the standpoint up to a uh, software pro to provide the driver. So I was working at the, uh, as a technical support guy. So uh, my job was to, when the, there is a new clipboard, to write a driver uh, for that clipboard in seven different, uh, uh, on seven different architectures in three different languages. So yeah, it was, uh, yeah. Really a challenging time for me. Uh, so I think, um, you know, luckily we, we I don't want, I don't want to say invented. So we, we were trying to, for a solution. We were looking for a solution, right? So um, SDK as um, uh, SDK, it's, it's not something new, right? But the way how we implemented it in, in order to write one software, one library, one driver, uh, and, and have it um, cross compatible across the different architecture different um, uh, type of the microcontrollers. I think our SDK currently with our software can uh, work uh, and use the same driver across, I think, 6,000 plus microcontrollers, you know, really, really different one. And uh, at that moment, uh, our problem with, you know, rewriting the software, rewriting the drivers, you know, porting to a different uh, architecture that problem was solved right so uh, and from 50 introducing 50 clipboards per per year we, we reached like 200 in a, in, a, in, a, in a year so so it was a really you know they, that that really skyrocket our, our development and, and speed of, of introducing new boards yeah. just how prolific um, micro e is at getting these boards out speaks a lot to the the engineering efforts and organization but it also speaks a lot to the microbus standard and how flexible it is right the fact that there's there's hardly a sensor made out there that won't fit under the standard and you, you you kind of quietly said that you know it's an open standard and i think that's something that a lot of people don't know right there's not a lot of other people you know either you know creating microbus out on boards or are just kind of aware of uh, that it's if you follow the standard you can use the um the logo right so um it's just a published standard and and you know it's got all the, the things that you kind of need in regular buses uh, positions right for from the bus right so you've got the i squared c the spi the uart the pwm you know places for putting interrupt and reset, right? So it's all the kind of common stuff you need for the vast majority of embedded sensors um, and controllers out there, right? You mentioned a few that, you know, you know, if we want to do I squared S and a few other things, but, but those are really the exception, right? Just the vast majority of stuff is really covered um, by this standard in a very regular way so that you can make all those different hosts types just work with those, um, and of course, you get into the software stuff, and really, we're going to start pointing towards Vaishnav's direction and all the amazing stuff that he's getting done to to make it all work in in, in Linux. But um, just you know, super kudos to Micro E building this ecosystem um, and and putting out all of those different um, you know the click out on boards because. Um, um, yeah, I think it's it's it really gives one way to connect up so many different things, and it's pretty fantastic. 
So I guess uh, let's let's talk a bit about connecting the actual clickboards to the Beagle ecosystem, right? So historically, you've had Pocket Beagle that supported two clickboards, and then you had things like the Tech Club case and the Game Pop, where you had the uh, micro e header um, up here. Um, Beagle Play obviously has it natively. Um, you have Beagle Connect Freedom that again has two um, micro e ports on both sides, and then you even have the micro e shuttles comp uh, compatible with AI64, right? So you can see a cute little shuttle here that just plugs into uh, AI64. Yeah, you can, but you can use the shuttle expansion um, on something like the Beagle Play to add, you know, to give you some distance to be able to place the the clickboard wherever you want it, um, or if it's something like I squared C to add multiple, um, you know, clickboards to it if it's something that's 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 busable. Um, but yeah, but we were for you know we're trying to put that microbus shuttle. Uh, on to if if we can't put a full microbus right at least put a microbus shuttle connector on there that's what we do for for, for Beagle Pony i64 um, exactly so you can you can also connect all the the microbus add-ons with that yeah the shuttle is great uh, as as you mentioned you can move it and and this is something that was re requested from my crew for years right and and as you may know the my crew we to, we like to do development fast, but when it's comes to you know, introducing a, like a standard and innovation, we, we really like to think about it. So the, the, the Microbus Shuttle gave um, uh, users the possibility to be uh, flexible, to uh, use a motion sensor, to use many other stuff without you know, moving the board. So, um, as, and basically the shuttle, when it's used with an extension on the microbus, it's basically as, as a stack board onto a board, you know, right? You're overlapping uh, a lines, but definitely you can use all interfaces or especially use maybe four different ice per sensors, which are a great thing to have. If you have, for example, one microbus, you can easily expand it to more, more than one clickboard, right? And I see we have a question coming up on, uh, yeah. on Twitch chat here. So aside from Beagle, how many development boards have adopted the Microbus click standard? So for what we know, right? So it's it's an open standard. Everybody can can um, use and utilize Microbus standard of the development boards. Uh, doesn't matter. It's a microcontroller, a processor, FPGA, whatever. So currently, what we know, it's rough, more than uh, 4,500 of, of, of those. Uh, which, uh, sorry, 450 uh, of those which we know and uh, for sure they are, they are on the market, right? Made by a development tool company or uh, silicon manufacturers, etc., etc. Of course, we as a company, we will we like to, to, to engage with those companies to promote the microbus circuit. So if anybody is developing something with the microbus circuit, reach out to us. Definitely we can do uh, a co-promotion. We can give you visibility in our community. Uh, and on our from our side as well. Yeah, that's another thing that really needs a countdown on your website. You, you, you know, every day a new board. It seems like once a week there's a new dev board that uses it. Because I know right now you list 463, but you know, just last week it was like 450. It seems like it. It just grows and grows. So it just shows how well you guys have done. The last thought here again, but I think he was going to talk about how the standard has mechanical different sizes available. So if somebody out there wants to create their own clipboard, they can go ahead and do it. And uh, I actually have an example of one right here. So this was for uh, an Electronica this year. Uh, we had to do some boards to uh, provide LiPo batteries for uh, Beagle Connect Freedom. So this is a clipboard mostly. Uh, except it's got two extra pins for the Connect Freedom to actually, um, you know, power. So, yeah, as a socket, as a standard, we defined for the host board the same thing we did for add-ons, right? So, the, uh, the, the, the microbus compatible, that's the, let's say, official uh, 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 name, of course, uh, we have a product line which is called Clickwork, just to differentiate those two, two things. So the Microbus compatible add-on boards are you know, also standardized by, by my crew. Of course, um, if somebody wants to make uh, a different type of board, a larger board to uh, make it more um, or to customize it for their own use, of course, they can do it. Um, now it's a matter of, of, of like um, uh, officially promoting something which is uh, a, a by my pre, uh, which is something which is not, uh, let's say, uh, under like uh, made under one hundred percent under under our standard. Not, now it's a let's say gray area, which uh, definitely I would like to avoid going into today. But uh, as a, as an end user, you know, everybody can make a board which will work with their their system with their application. 
and uh, um, fortunately work for their 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 solution, right? So uh, they can make a bigger board, uh, more power board. They can use a CAN interface or I square S if needed. So this is something that definitely can provide uh, a more flexibility uh, for the end end users. I'm not talking about the micro ecosystem and uh, and, uh, and and what we are doing on our side. There's a level of quality control that you do, of course. So you know. That's that's why exactly. it's important. So as far as software detection is an eight, um, goes, you know, um, Vaishnav's done a lot of work on that, and that makes Spiegel really really cool. Um, and how um, you know you handle it, I guess, from from the user space. You want to talk about that, Vaishnav? Yeah, sure. So uh, like we already saw about the number of clicks or that are already out there, and the number of platforms that support these um, the microbus sockets. So we will talk a little bit about how we interface these click add-on boards on Linux. So in, in a typical Linux system, these i squared c spy UART, um, all these buses are non-discoverable buses. So we have discoverable buses like USB, PCI, where we plug in something and there is a discovery mechanism. The host already knows what we all plugged into the system and all this driver probe or loading the drivers, everything happens magically without the user interfering with anything. But by default, these devices, the microbus add-on boards, mostly the sensors, the I2C devices, the displays, all are like non-discoverable buses. So through the microbus Linux kernel driver, we are kind of bringing in a, making it the microbus into a probable bus. So probable means the host can ask what's on the bus uh, or what's on the microbus socket connected. Uh, then the add-on board can describe what's, uh, what all are connected on the add-on board, all the devices, what the, uh, the, the data needed for the device driver for. And host can get all the uh, understanding of this add-on board and perform this device driver for just as it would happen on an actual uh, bus that supported device discovery. So this is made uh, possible through the uh, click ID mechanism that uh, is developed by Microelectronica. Micro so we have a one-way prompt that sits on the uh, chip select line on this uh, add-on boards. And uh, as soon as you plug in this add-on board to a supported uh, microbus socket that has uh, the microbus Linux driver already uh, running an instantiator. Let's say, X, for example, take a Beagle Play. Uh, we plug in a microbus add-on board with the identifier EEPROM on the Beagle Play microbus socket. So the, the add-on board, uh, the EEPROM has all the information about this add-on board. So let's say if you consider something like an OLED display. So we'll, for an OLED display driver, the um, the Linux driver will like to know what's the actual device driver or the device ID that, that the, the device driver that needs to be probed, then the model, then maybe the maximum supported clock speed and uh, resolution, all those parameters. Then there are uh, some things like we will have reset, power on, kind of GPOs, interrupts. All these are stored in a platform independent way in this EEPROM and the host can ask for yeah. And we should make it clear that not all clickboards yet support this click ID feature, but they are currently constantly being refreshed to add it uh, by micro e. Please go yes. ahead, Vaishnav. Yes. Yeah. And like as soon as you, as soon as the host uh, uh, detects this add-on board, it can ask for the information from this uh, EEPROM. And so this, the content, the uh, information contained in the EEPROM is always this add-on board specific. It does not have anything that's specific to a particular microbus socket. Or let's say if you can consider a bigger play and let's say a bigger connect, uh, you, you don't have any platform specific information on this um, uh, add-on board information. Why I said that is because the general way of describing uh, or instantiating these devices in a Linux, embedded Linux system is through the device tree overlays. So if we are considering to write a device tree overlay for an OLED display, we need to have a different device tree overlay for 
let's say beagle play when we connect it to the beagle play when we connect it to the pocket beagle and even when you when you change it to the next socket on the pocket beagle you need a different overlay device to overlay and so if you considering the number of add-on boards micro e has and the number of supported boards so i kind of did a survey two years back at that time there were 150 micro bus add-on boards that had existing Linux kernel driver support and maybe even if we consider only the bigger platforms that's around more than 1200 device overlays that we need to maintain so because the device tree overlay the mechanism it uh, it combines the platform specific information and the add-on board information into a single entity and we need to maintain that but the micro what the micro bus driver did is build split out this platform specific information but because we know we already we already know what's the socket that this add-on board is going to connect to it's always a microbus add-on microbus socket and we know how the pins are laid out and how the interrupt which pin will be which uh, the pin will be used for the interrupt and all so we combine this information though uh, from the uh, the add-on board specific information that's on the EEPROM and platform specific information that's on the platform and we are reducing the number of permutations to maybe like if you say 150 add-on boards we just need 150 different identifiers for each add-on board and just one uh, device to overlay yeah. and describe this plat uh, platform specific things. So I just wanted to 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 first thank thank Vishyan for Vishyan for for um, Vishyan for everything he did for when it's come to uh, clipboards. You know, you really you know uh, make them uh, not only a simple add-on. So um, the, the the whole idea when we started this let's say journey uh, two years ago was you know to make the to to personalize the peripheral, right? To to make them to give them more. Uh, than just you know uh, a type of the board. So uh, as Vaishnav mentioned, so we, we added so many things to in, uh, for the system to identify peripheral and to use the correct driver, uh, you know type, version, interfaces, etc. Uh, what what I wanted to say is that from we currently have 100 uh, plus uh, boards supported with the drivers with the manifest, and, and and this is something which will grow over time. What we are currently doing is, of course, uh, redesigning the boards in order to uh, for people to utilize it quickly with, with those already created manifests and drivers. But what what uh, we started doing last year in November, it's uh, it's um, uh, introducing all the new boards uh, from November until now, which is roughly a 100 plus boards uh, with this feature. So we are talking about uh, using the click ID as a standard uh, feature on our new new tools new new add-ons which will eventually over time again uh, accumulate uh, probably a thousand plus boards with the id feature and definitely which we'll continue using using in the future so now all the new boards that, that we're introducing can be um, uh, created and supported the same way we, we have done uh, actually, why should have done it for for one hundred plus boards? So why should you did take this a level up further, right? Uh, for example, a clipboard that is connected on uh, Beagle Connect Freedom appears on Linux. How does that magic work? Yeah, that yeah, yeah. That, that's the magic of Grebus, I may say. So uh, Grebus, we can uh, think of Grebus as kind of a RPC like subsystem that has very strong roots in the Linux kernel. So this was developed as part of the Project Terra modular smartphone project by Google. So where you could just have add-on uh, like modules on your smartphone and you could just customize um, your smartphone to whatever you want with different add-on modules. So when you think of something like that, like with this uh, microbus add-on board, so there has been a lot of work that has been going on or uh, using re repurposing this gray bus for IoT, then the Beagle Connect uh, uh, project which makes use of the gray bus and the Linux kernel drivers to basically eliminate all the low-level software development. So 
how what this happens is a through grippers we can make this let's say we have a beagle connect that has a, a microcontroller maybe a wireless microcontroller and it runs a generic grippers firmware on software that is written in software and we uh, through the grippers subsystem we can make those uh, peripherals on the uh, remote nodes, say, let's say the Beagle Connect, let's say we have an I2C controller on the Beagle Connect. So this uh, specific, uh, the generic uh, uh, software or the Grebus firmware will just uh, need to have the capability to uh, do basic transactions on this I2C bus. So we can do I2C read, write, all, all these basic transactions and through the Grebus protocol, we can make it appear on the Linux system uh, as a kind of a virtual device through. So I think uh, the uh, ecosystem is a little bit complex. I, I must say it just magically appears really? as a virtual device in Linux. Uh, so the traditional way would have been, you know, if I were to plug in an add-on card, like, like a clipboard on, on, on the on the freedom, I would have to recompile the Zephyr operating system with those peripherals. And what you have done is to remove that requirement entirely. So you just plug in the clipboards in with the same Zephyr operating system that is put on, out on production, and it just appears. Uh, and you can yes. use it from Beagle Play directly. Yeah, Beagle Play so the standard in like CFS, the IAO kind of interface. As, as, as if it was a local device. Yes, exactly. And even you don't even need to know what actual device is on your add-on board. Let's say there is an MPU 9050 or some other uh, maybe IMU on your add-on board. So and the Linux interfaces, the CFS, IOU interfaces are always standard. So let's say you swap it to a different uh, IMU. You don't even need to know that what's the actual silicon or the actual device sensor that's running on the, that device because there is already an identifier EEPROM on that board. You just plug in, it appears through the Linux standard CSFS interfaces. So uh, if I look at it, it makes a lot of engineers work very similar, maybe robotics, all different kind of applications. To, like the Big Connect virtually eliminates all with the all these low level software developments. How, how so what you at that point? Oh yeah. Uh, how about the cost in terms of latencies? Because you are now connecting over a wireless link before you're doing an IMU read or a temperature sensor need. What would you say the supply is better? Uh, I would say maybe kind of we need to take long term um, like readings like some something like environment sensors or maybe air quality sensors that are deployed along like over a large span of distance and you want to collect all this data uh, to a central node and like maybe you want to collect it over a long period longer period but um, i will say it's, uh, maybe the latencies i have measured is more of like uh, five hertz kind of uh, sampling rate is what you can achieve but it will dif uh, dif differ on different kind of sensors so i have been working on something to uh, on the Graber side to maybe record and play back some transactions. So in the, in the traditional Graber's um, mechanism, what we usually do is the host, the, the idea of Graber's is to keep all the intelligence in the host. So the host will kind of just say the to the remote node that what all the minute transactions to make. So I was just trying to do some research work and work on like recording, so we can set the batch of Grebus transactions to the remote node and play back those to maybe make this work on a little bit more of like latency or kind of uh, real time um, kind of use cases. But that's still work in progress, I must say. But it's still a really interesting use case, right? Because what this enables you to do is, you know, as far as your Beagle Play is concerned, you can have, you just have your central node, and if you want to put sensors around your house, around a, you know, your school, warehouse, whatever you want, you just have a bunch of sensors that can be thrown up really quickly, and they just show up as if they're local sensors in your place. So if you prototype, you're prototyping on, you know, you have your I2C script and C Python, whatever you want, and you just translate that as if it was a local device, that's really, really cool. Um, 
and you know, knowing that there is more performance to squeeze out of it is always always interesting. So, uh, Jason Robert, does this mean that our traditional Beagle cape is dead, and micro EV is the way to do it? <laughs> Robert, we'll let you we'll let you comment there. <laughs> You're, you are the voice of Jason now, Robert. Nope, it's it's the similar problem, but now we have identification. <laughs> And it's no longer just a Beagle problem. There are 463 other boards that could be run in Linux that could uh, this would also solve. So this whole idea would solve everyone from microchip to TI to old mobile boards to ST. Everyone has the microdroid connector. So this would allow, well, we, we encourage collaboration here. So, you know, <laughs> everyone's welcome to join the party. All right, so I guess uh, since you know Jason can't comment, but as far as you know the Beagle documentation for all this goes, Vaishnav, where can we find your your great work? Yeah, I think it's all included in the default images with Beagle Play, and you can find always find this in the uh, Beagle Board Kit as well. There is uh, so there is a database of this uh, add-on board descriptors. It's so grabbers use something called manifest. Uh, to describe the devices and all these remote nodes. So we have chosen the same descriptor format to uh, describe the devices. And that's also an interesting reason behind why we chose that descriptor format. Because we told about uh, the add-on boards plugging into a physical port on the Beagle Play, physical microbus port on the Beagle Play, and a, uh, you connect an add-on board to a Beagle connect and it virtually kind of appears in your uh, host Beagle Play as a kind of virtual microbus pool. So on all these con uh, these configurations, we needed to have a single add-on board descriptor. So that's why we chose the Grebus manifest as the add-on board descriptor. So right now, all this, uh, this add-on board descriptors go in a repository called manifesto. It's the same one that was continued as part of the project era. It's, it's in a big uh, board kit fork of the manifesto. And you also wrote a uh, a little web interface for generating manifests. Is that is that my understanding right? Yeah, I must say I I, I have not been maintaining that interface. So it's just you. So if you look at how you fill up the data for a device driver in Linux is you are just filling out, you have a template of device tree bindings, you are just filling out the data uh, for this particular device or port. So, you, so I just created a form based on, so you will have just, so you will have, one, since the microbus port has, we already know how the actual socket looks like and how, how the actual socket is described in Linux, it's only a limited number of entries we have and then there is always uh, custom properties like let's say you have a display there will be uh, width height all these custom properties so this uh, i combined all these together and just created a form you just fill the form you get the manifest that you flash to the uh, uh, eprom and you have this uh, support already enabled for a new board very cool and as always, you know, open source projects. So any bugs people find, they're welcome to contribute back and uh, and you know, open open an issue there. Yes. Um, so as far as actual documentation on the Beagle board side, there's there's some that's coming up online now. There's more in the coming weeks. Jason is nodding yes. Uh, <laughs> and you know, it's it's going to be an ongoing story to make this very usable. But I think uh, you know, the auto detection mechanism goes a long way towards that. Um, and um, there's also, of course, you can still use these as GPIOs, but for that, you, you need to turn off the overlay so that, um, you know, the, the, the system is able to access it as if they're native GPIOs instead of going through the, the micro bus driver. I think, we have, I think we have manifest files now to use them as generic stuff. It's just part of the docs of how to actually do it is what's missing. So there's manifest for uh, just a GPIO, I2C, SPY, and UART, and then it just shows up. But, yeah. and it's part of the doc this problem. live. If you listen to this live, it's it's a day or two away. If you're watching, you know, catching it later, then chances are it's already online. And you're always welcome to join the Discord, beagleboard.org slash Discord. Ask your questions there. We have a bunch of folks happy to, to help. All right. Well, I think this has been a really great episode. We've learned a lot. Um, 
same time in the next two weeks with another great set of guests. Alex, thank you so much for joining. Um, we're definitely going to have to catch up with you later to see what new developments you guys are doing. I mean, board a day, so you know, there, I'm sure there'll be a lot of fun, fun developments. Oh yeah, thank you, thank you for inviting me. As I said, it's really a pleasure to be part of this group. Bye. Absolutely. Thank you all. See you in two weeks, same time, Mondays at 10 a.m. Central Time. Take care. Bye.